Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more AFL 23. Here today on the channel, we have Season 2, Episode 12 of my Brisbane Lions Coach Career Series. And here today, we have our finals campaign. We finish in the top eight, which is massive. We finish in fifth, and we've got a match coming up. And I'm not going to spoil it until it comes up. Uh, against a certain football club, we've had a lot of matches with... Um, we've also got the end of season stuff as well, so we're going to have to look at the brown low. But we've got a match against the Crows. They finished in eighth this season, and whoever wins this is out. There is no second chance for either side. So if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. We won the Premiership last year, and there's also been an update. We can actually see the overalls of players now, which is pretty good. <laughs> Before, for such a long time, uh, that wasn't available for whatever reason. But we're going to be hosting them at the Gabba, the Crows, a solid list, and probably the teams that I've probably feared a lot. They uh, tend to beat us a lot. Um, I've, I would say we've, they're probably it's probably our worst win-loss record against them. I would rather face someone, I guess. It, but uh, here we go. Finals September is here. Massive match. Who's going to win the toss? Crows do, and they go to the right of screen. Here we go. At the Gabba. Finals. Regardless of the results, I am proud of the boys coming back and narrowly making finals by a handful of games. But here we go. McInerney going to take the run up. Wins it to Dunkley, who gets dropped instantly, unfortunately. Back again we go. Dunkley chips it in. Danaher, he's going to play on because the set shots are nowhere near as consistent than playing on like that. They're still broken, and we're going to use it. As the Lions in the Premiership kit, there it is with the little badge. Stick it between the big sticks. Crows, a lot of good players. None of them have turned up. And look like they have. <laughs> Sizzly chips it in. And the Crows are going to take a set shot. The AI is significantly better nowadays as Tex Walker is going to take it just within the 50. Cool, calm, and collected. Tex Walker pulls it slightly to the left. And will opportunities like that cost the Crows? Only time will tell. More or less opportunities like that will cost us. Um, I haven't done that the entirety of this season. Something silly like that, gifting a goal. But a sloppy goal given away could ultimately cost us this match. Gardner picks it up one-handed. He bombs it to try find Danaher. Danaher goes up. It gets spilt. Cameron handballs it to a crow facing his former side. And it's bouncing in. McInerney somehow gets it. He gives it and goes. And the Lions somehow go up by a goal here. The big O. More accurate in free-flowing running football than the set shot, would you believe it? The Crows pick it up. They go forward. And unfortunately, we can't get to that one. The Crows play on and get the goal. The AI knows that they're more accurate on the run, eh? It's a one-point game here. The Lions win it. Dunkley gets caught but releases the footy. Only as far as Danaher, who winds up. And I think he's going to slightly pull it to the right unless it bends back. And it doesn't. Yeah, you need to be inside the 50 if we are going to try and score a goal like that. The Crows now to bring it out from the back. Rayner chops down a Crow. Rayner. It wasn't Rayner. It must have been someone else. Rayner gets it in the end. Sometimes it's hard to tell who's who. I wish you just had the names above their head like it's FIFA. Because it, when you're pinging it, it's so hard to see. I don't know why there isn't an icon on the left as well. 
Yeah, that's probably the main feature I'm crying out for. Just like, how hard would it be to have a translucent name just above someone's head? It's even going to get more confusing when we get to the stage where there's going to be regenerated players that all look somehow similarly. But for whatever reason, we've somehow given them the ball here. And also, not all the numbers are updated anyway. Some of them have been changed. I think some of the numbers are even from pre last season, potentially. And also, um, when players get traded, numbers get moved around as well. So, Big Ant, if you're watching, put player names above players. Obviously, when um, you're not controlling them, it's really whoever has the ball. However, FIFA does it. Anyway, unfortunately, we're six points and a goal down here in this match. It's 2-1, 13, 3-1, 19, going into this second term. Neil wins it, gets chopped down, unfortunately. And it's another ping for holding the ball. We've been called a lot for holding the ball or incorrect disposal, which is infuriating, to say the least. But it is still a super close fixture, this one. Either side can win. And the Crows get another hit with a little bit of defensive mishap, unfortunately. Straight through the goals. The Crows make it a two-goal game. The Lions go forward. Ben King just outside the top of the goal square. Goes back and brings it back within a one-point game. The Lions facing the Adelaide Crows. A interstate derby, as it were. Neil finds Rayner. He gives it and goes. And it goes back to the top of the goal square to try and find King again. It ultimately has found Zach Bailey. He's going to kick this one. And all things are tied up in this second turn. Only time will tell who's going to win. Is this the start of our finals campaign? Or is it the end? Neil goes up. A lot of lions, but there's crows hunting as well. And we just can't seem to get it out. I don't know how they handballed it there. But now we've been caught on the counter-attack. Andrews comes up, completely misses the mark. And Coleman can't find that one. It's hit the left forward pocket. And the Crows have an opportunity to get back in front. He's going to go around the body, looking to bend it like Beckham. And the Crows score number five in this match. The South Australians among you. Going ballistic in the comments. As the Crows could make another final. Final. I wouldn't even feel too bad losing today if they ultimately go on and win it. But if they don't, I'm furious. As Danaher answers quickly, 31-31. And I don't know <laughs> how this match is going to go. It's going to be crazy to see. McInerney wins it. Neil can't get to it. An interception, maybe. It's somehow fallen back to Crow hands. Leicester, the Crows give it and go. And with 30 seconds remaining of this second term, it's a six-goal game here at the Gabba. The Crows back in front. As Seedsman comes on, and Wayne goes off. A couple good handballs. The McInerney bombs it to try and find Bailey or Ben King, and it's Ben King. Also, just on a side note, just on a little bit of a tangent, what a player he has been in this career series. He's been so, so good for us. He goes back and kicks it. 6-1, 6-1, 37-37. Who will get the last goal of this second term? Will it be the Lions? Lockie Neal can't get it out. Ball up in the end, 12 seconds remaining. Ball up. McInerney wins it. Only as far as the a Crow and Neil. The captain bangs it with four seconds remaining of this match. 7-1. The Lions are going to go into half time with a one goal lead. Lockie, Chockey, Neil. 
Never feel. Never fear. Neil is here. <laughs> McInerney wins it. And there's a bit of a Lions resurgence here. Maybe. Get snuffed out. Had an opportunity there to score. Unfortunately beaten by the siren. But the Lions are back in front. Winning the second quarter. I also find with the ruck contests as well. Basically just trying to hit it to the left or downward works. Left seems to be better. And if the ruckman moves, you match their angle. Um, I found that as well. And just bombing it <laughs> whenever you can. Sometimes better, especially on the harder difficulties. They've patched handballs again. So but The thing is as well, my advice could change. So I don't know, just sort of play however you want. Don't take my or any other YouTuber's gameplay advice as gospel because we all play on different difficulties. But mostly just time your marks and spoils and you should be alright. But sometimes they break or patch the game. So it's hard to tell what exactly is going wrong. Leicester there with a good interception. He's going to go forward now quickly as we have numbers. And unfortunately the Crows get it here in the midfield and they've actually overlapped us. Gardner comes up. Can't seem to beat those or win those duels against Tex Walker who's lost a bit of confidence in this one, chipping it around, and the Crows with an opportunity to come back. He hits it in the sun. I actually can't see if it's gone through, and it has. 43-43-7-1, and the Crows are still not down and out for this as Isaac Ranke comes on and Sam Berry comes off. Is it Tom Berry or Sam Berry? Is that he's related to Jared? I, I I don't know. Anyway, Danaher somehow gets it, smacks it between the big sticks, and it's another textbook finish here for the Brisbane Lions and Joe Danaher, who's coming to his last couple of seasons at the club. We're probably gonna have to trade him at some point, but not yet. That day has not come. McCluggage now hits it outside the fifty. Is it gonna go over the line? And he gets punched on the line. Would you believe it? I probably had enough time there to get it a little bit more in. But has that cost us a goal, along with that Sicily mishap? Dunkley manages to get over the line, though. So I'd say that probably cancels it out. But it's a two-goal game here as Josh Dunkley goes absolutely ecstatic. But there's still plenty of football here today. It's going to be a high-scoring one. McInerney wins it. Unfortunately, the Crows win the midfield battle. A couple of good handballs. So amazing interception there by Leicester. And Danaher and the boys go up. They need to capitalize on this one. Jack Gunston has plenty of players in the goal square. He's going to go for goal, though, which is a little bit selfish. However, he manages to convert. And the Lions extend it to a three-goal lead, the highest in this third term. Can we make a preliminary... I can't say it, probably. A preliminary final, a prelim. A couple good handballs there. Barry wins it. We're doing it in the memory of Will Ashcroft, who hasn't died, but he um, has been out for the entirety of this season. Might as well have been dead to this career series. But we go again. The Crows go forward. Need to stop this attack. 26 seconds remaining. Coleman comes up. Gardner, he bombs it as well. And the Lions want another one here if we can. Danaher wins it and chips it in, trying to find a target. King, there's a couple of them. And Gunston with the grab. Gunston against his former side as well. Man, we've got so many former Crows, actually. On the stroke of three-quarter time, actually whiffs and put it to, puts it to the left of screen. Has that cost us? Two goals. A goal, sorry, a goal we should have scored and a goal we should have, shouldn't have let go. So, tough. As the fourth quarter is now here. Lions 10, 2-62. Crows 7, 43. Both sides need a dominant fourth term. A mistimed handball has given the Crows an opportunity here who have got so many midfield players and they're handballing it around brilliantly. Ball in and Tex Walker wins it. Haven't seen much of him in this game, obviously missing that first. He has an opportunity to score his first goal of this match. To score the Crows number eight. He goes back and misses again <laughs> somehow and was that to the two points there because of 
Tex Walker's poor goal kicking. Has that cost the Crows this game? The Crows win it back. They fire it back in quick. Leicester uh, plays on. It's going to get pinged for holding the ball, which is ridiculous, if I do say. Um, but I press the button. The Crows to get a goal back. And they do convert this time. And it's a two-goal game with a minute 34 to show. Either side still can win this match. It's a 12-goal game. McInerney loses the ruck contest. Dunkley and McCluggage tracking. It gets fallen to Tex, who hits it from open play this time around. Doesn't take the set shot, but converts for his first. And now it is a one-goal game here with a minute 25 remaining. McInerney loses another ruck contest. The Crows go forward again. This time Lester wins it. He knows he has to hit it quick. It falls to Cameron. He can't get it. And it rebounds incredibly quickly. The Crows find an open player. Gardner go Sisley goes up. The ball doesn't go to a set shot. And they somehow mark it on the line. And the Crows, on the tightest of angles... Another bend it like Becker moment. They somehow get it. And it's a 10 2 either side. And with 54 seconds remaining, next goal wins. McInerney needs to win this rock contest. He loses it again for the third time. And the Crows surge forward. Leicester goes up. There's two Lions there. They win the mark contest. But the Crows pick it up. No tackle has been given. Andrews is here. The ball goes again, but only as far as a crow who got tackled. And then no one's been pinged for incorrect disposal here. Sicily gets it out to McInerney, who takes the mark and is absolutely just trying to give it and go because the Lions need a goal here. Unfortunately, it gets rebounded again. Ainsworth, and it gets spoiled. No one hits it. Only as far as Coleman, who gives up a mark. 14 seconds remaining. And the Crows, regardless of the result of this, it's a goal ultimately, but they're going to knock out the Lions with three seconds remaining. 68-62, and unfortunately me and the Brisbane Lions have bottled this one um, after a Crow resurgence here. I'm gutted, I'm gobsmacked, but it's a good game, and unfortunately, hey, that's football sometimes. You win some, you lose some. You get over the line, you dominate, or you uh, simply get unlucky. And after leading the start and end of that third and fourth term, ultimately, yeah, we lost with Sam DeConning there celebrating. Can't get used to him in a Crows kit. But yeah, Sicily, also that Gunston miss, uh, probably ultimately cost us the match. And so that is the end of Season 2 here. Finishing in fifth and getting knock out, knocked out in a final, um, the first round, which is pretty disappointing. But hey, that's football. Hopefully we can redeem ourselves in season three with Richmond uh, finishing top here are the, the stats though. So the season has been completed and let's see who won the premiership in the end. So it's here, which they put in finally. So the power beat Melbourne in the final. Um, Port Adelaide beat St. Kilda in the prelim. Unfortunately, Richmond got knocked out by Melbourne, so that's bad for them. Uh, they actually knocked out the Crows in the end and Essendon as well. But the power, the Saints, Melbourne and Richmond getting a prelim, that isn't too bad. I think Richmond probably underperformed. But it's Ken Hinckley's Port Adelaide to beat Melbourne. And Melbourne have thrown another finals uh, campaign, which is quite interesting. We will go through the Brownlow and the Coleman, though. As we move to Season 3. Alright, so let's have a look at the results, I suppose. But I think Sinning's the trajectory... So so it was... T uh, actually, we'll talk about this first. So Tom Mitchell managed to win it, followed by Miller, Petrarca, and Ryan. Uh, Joe Danaher picks up the Coleman for the second year in a row. And Adams gets the rising star. But uh, Tom Mitchell wins another Brownlow. This time at the Collingwood Football Club. His first at Hawthorne, of course. Cameron, McInerney, Neal win another All-Australian. Hardly any Richmond players there, though, which is kind of wild, seeing as they finish top of the uh, the league. But anyway, I think that's not too bad, seeing as we, uh, where we were. But, hey, they are slowly and surely tweaking and fixing hard difficulty. So I can't wait to see. I think I'd like I think I'd like to do like five or ten seasons with Brisbane just to see how many 
finals and prelims we could win. So looking at it over like a two-year time frame, a minor premiership and a premiership, then finishing in fifth and then getting knocked out in the first round of finals is bad. But hey, this is a transitional period for the Lions. I feel like I won it with Fagan's group and now it is my turn to bring in draftees, bring in new players and uh, hopefully try and create my own dynasty with Brisbane. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Also, there's a lot of players that we probably want to try and move on as well. Uh, I think, uh, let me know in the comments, players who I should sell. Um, Actually, bear with me. I'll get the list I wrote down. Like, literally, I have a... Where is it? I've got bloody sheets of paper here because it's easier for me to write that down. Yeah, so I want to try and move on... Rich, who's uh, 32, 33. So Rich is going to retire. We'll try and move him on. Uh, Lester as well, 85, 30. He's going to be 31. Uh, Lions, 83, 30. He's going to be 31. Um, I have highlighted McCarthy and Danaher as well, but I think we could probably give them one more season. Zorko um, probably needs to go as well. So we've got to replace those guys. So I think we need a midfielder. To, the thing is, I think it's like we need to replace all those guys. Some of those we can replace with draftees, but I think we need a. Funnily enough, I think we just need a forward, a midfielder, and a back again, like last season. I don't really want to bring in more than three players, like trade wise. Uh, the rest will go for picks and draftees. But anyway, I've got to wrap things up. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for season three coming out soon, or maybe we should do another career series. Um, Anyway, thanks guys. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more AFL 23 content on the channel. If you want to see more from me, check out the videos on screen. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon. Cheers.